Guys, we done the water crossing the other day and we got the X-Max, we done it with here. I just want to take the thing apart a little bit and just have a little look at the bearings inside the diff cases just to make sure that no water's got in there and if it has, dry it out. So even though it didn't get submerged into water, it's still got a lot of water around it. The back end looked like it's kind of sort of dropped in a little bit towards the end. The wheel bearings and the diff bearings look like they got wet. So we're going to take it apart and have a little look. But first of all, we're going to have to blow all the dirt off of it. Also, we've got these alloy wheel hexes to put onto the UDR and a servo saver for the Traxxas TRX4. Let's hope that fits. All right, so we're going to start off with having a little look at the wheel bearings. Oh, guys, that is solid. That one's smooth, but we're going to have a look in there anyway. Alright, so I've got all the wheel bearings out. Some of them have seized up completely and others, they're fairly rough. So I'm going to have to soak these in something, take the shields off, make sure I can free them up again, then re-lube them. The shafts here, these have got sand or water or something in there because these have gone all rough. So I'm going to take these apart too. So next, I'm going to soak all this stuff in some brake cleaner just to get the worst of the stuff off first. Alright, so all the Traxxas bearings, they've actually freed up. This one here, it, it does move, but yeah, it's really notchy. So the best way that I've found to get these shields off is with a knife. You've got to be obviously careful not to cut yourself, but it seems the easiest way just to get in there under the seal, just ping them off. Alright, so these RPM bearings here, they're actually locked solid. That's how far it moves and that's it. That's freed it off a bit now. Hopefully, if we let that soak for a while, that's going to smooth off, and then we'll just pack it with some grease. All right, so while those bearings are soaking, we may as well take the diffs out and have a little look what's going on in there. Right, so if we look in the rear housing, as you can see, a little bit of water's got in there. And this thing wasn't even submerged for that long. It literally just got a few splashes on it. So if you put these things under water, it really is a full rebuild. Luckily, I only really splashed it so I can get away with just doing this. I don't think any water sort of got anywhere else. But it's still definitely worth taking apart and making sure you get all the water out. So these bearings, these have definitely got wet. You can see that's so I've gone a bit rough. So I'm going to do the same to these bearings, clean them up, and then we'll put you back on when we're ready to clean it all up and grease it up again. Right, so while those bearings are soaking, I can reassemble these shafts. I'm not really sure whether to oil them or not. Some people say you've got to put oil on there, but I've found if you oil stuff like this, it's just a magnet for dirt to stick to, and then it turns into grinding paste and it can actually make it worse. All right, so all nice and smooth again. I'm gonna put no oil in there. I know a lot of you guys are gonna give me grief saying, okay, have you got to oil it? But I think I'd rather run it, run it dry than all sand and stuff sticking to it and turning into the grinding paste. So usually I would oil my bearings with this stuff, but because this X-Max is for water crossing, I'm going to grease them up. So it's going to be not quite as free running, but it's going to be less likely for water to get in. I'm really going to try and cram as much oil as I possibly can into each bearing. So I'm going to do this to all the other bearings, and then we'll put you back on.
All right, so we've got the bearings all greased up. Now we can start to reassemble. Uh, which bearings was it? By the way, guys, I always run this bolt in here really tight because it always tends to come loose, even if it's locked tight, even if it's tight. When that bolt can come loose, this can come out and then these can crack across here. So it's important that you always make sure that these bolts remain tight. Same on the diff. So I'm going to put a little bit more grease on here than I normally do, just to sort of try and keep any water out in future. All right, so I'm going to do the same again on the front end. Have it guys, all back together and jobs are good and all right so now we can put it back on the shelf until next time when we do a water crossing. So next we're gonna do the UDR. So it's a common fault for these UDRs to strip off these rear hexes. I've seen other people do it on the forums and on Facebook, and it happened to me when I did a burnout. So I got these from eBay, China. I mean they look really well made. I think they probably made a powder metal and then they've machined it quickly just around here to give it a nice shiny look. So if anybody's interested, here is the listing. All right, let's put them on. The nice thing about these discs is, look, you can actually put the wrench through, it's still a little bit tight, but you can get at the screw on the other side. With the standard plastic disc, you can't. So guys, this video's gone on long enough now, so I'm gonna do the servo saver mod on the TRX4 in the next video. Stemp's been evicted, he's got a brand new office in here. So guys, I hope you liked that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, smash that bell button to stay notified. See you soon, bye.